Today, we're doing a nice little comparison. Today's video will be a little bit different than what we traditionally do. Instead of just making one hero dish, we're actually gonna do more of a comparison. People often get confused by how many different types of meat there are. There's so many terms that fly around. Wagyu, Kobe, beef, steak, A5. And then within Wagyu, there's all these very particular names that can actually get quite confusing. And on top of that, there are a million different cuts of meat. Tenderloin, sirloin, tomahawk. I get it, it gets really confusing. But today, we'll do a nice simple comparison that I think will be really fun. I've got two strip loins right next to me, but one of them is American Wagyu while the other is Japanese Wagyu. So we'll get a nice simple comparison going. Fundamentally, what makes these two things different? How do they look different? How do they cook different? What's the difference when you're cooking them? And I think most importantly, what's the difference in taste? flavor. This right here is an American Wagyu strip loin. Take a really nice close look at the marbling on this. Already, you can tell that this would be a much higher quality piece of meat compared to the beef you might get at the supermarket up the road. If I were to go into that supermarket and lay this next to all the other meat, your eyes would be drawn right to this piece. While it may not be the prettiest marbling you've ever seen, there's a really good blend between fat and meat here. But just wait until you see the Japanese Wagyu. This right here is the same cut, except instead of American Wagyu, this is Japanese A5 Wagyu. To get into specifics, this is an a5 Takamori strip loin. Both are between 10 and 12 ounces, so I'm keeping everything pretty standard across the board to compare these two pieces. But right away, can't you see that difference in marbling? Just look how complex and amazing it is up here. You would be in absolute awe if this was sitting at your supermarket next to everything else. While the American stands out, nothing compares to what I'm holding right here. Now you'll notice I'm still holding these in the packaging. I've talked about this before, but particularly in our Japanese Wagyu here, if I hold that fat, it's gonna start melting immediately in my hand. All this Wagyu, as usual, is from from my go-to spot, the Wagyu shop. That has never and will never be an ad. This is where I buy my Wagyu beef. I've tried literally every single place you can get Wagyu online and this is my spot. Before we cook these up, let me go ahead and tell you a few of the differences between these two because it'll kind of help with context to know what we're getting ourselves into. The most important difference between American and Japanese Wagyu is all about genetics. Japanese Wagyu are full blood, which means that both parents must have 100% Wagyu genetics. Obviously, that's not the same case for American Wagyu. The genetics are verified through DNA testing testing, and bloodlines are very carefully traced. Now on the other end of the spectrum, American Wagyu are crossbred, which means that the parents are one full blood Wagyu cattle crossed with another breed, which usually happens to be Black Angus. But American Wagyu do have to be at least 50% Wagyu genetics. Not surprisingly, outside of genetics, the way these are raised makes another huge difference. Aside from American Wagyu being domestic and Japanese Wagyu being imported, of course, the cattle are fed for different lengths of time. American Wagyu are fed anywhere between 250 and 450 days. Japanese Wagyu are fed for over 600 days and many times over 700 days. That's an insane difference. In terms of the actual product, we've obviously tried Japanese A5 numerous times now, and we know that it'll have that melt in your mouth buttery texture. The actual color is also a little bit lighter, more pinkish. The actual loins and steaks that are cut from them are naturally gonna be wider, knowing that Japanese cattle are much larger than their American counterparts. Now, we won't quite be able to cut this with a fork the way we can do with Japanese Wagyu, but this will still be much better than any USDA prime product. I don't know about you, but I'm getting a little tired of just talking about these steaks. Let's cook them up and try them out. Now that I've got both my steaks laid out on my cutting board, it's time to season them up. They've been resting out of room temperature long enough that we're ready to cook them. You don't want to rest these for too long at room temp, especially the Japanese Wagyu, because there are just so much fat there. And like a stick of butter, it's going to start melting on you. I like to keep it very simple when cooking Wagyu. I really like to taste the flavor that's within. Just a little bit of salt over the top of each one. I'm going to use a really fine salt today. Both of these cuts of meat are the stars today, and we're just trying to compare them as they are. I don't need any fancy salt action right now. I'll flip both of them over over and salt the other sides. Then, once some of that salt is spilled all over my cutting board, I'll gently press the edges of each cut of meat to make sure that everything is coated in salt. Same thing for my piece of Japanese Wagyu. Now that we've taken them out of the packaging, I wanna show you another close-up look at that marbling. It really is fascinating how perfect these pieces of meat are, and it's a treat every single time I get to cook one of these up. And I don't wanna leave out the American Wagyu. That is a damn good-looking piece of beef right there. But again, the difference in marbling kinda of reminds me of a parent and child making an art piece next to each other. Everything's always relative, and one of them is gonna turn out looking pretty silly compared to the other one. Now these are well seasoned, let's cook them up. Now I'll crank the heat up with my carbon steel pan. You can see that this bad boy has some weird coloring on it. And like a cast iron, it's gonna build up that dark patina, patina, whatever it's called, over time. To start, I think I wanna do my American Wagyu because it's a little bit thicker, so I'll leave it a little bit more time to rest before we cut these open. Once my pan gets nice and hot, these steaks are gonna be cooked in slightly different ways. The American Wagyu has a nice fat cap here. So to lubricate our whole pan and start the cooking process, I'm gonna render off this that. Now once that oil gets nice and hot, lay your pan flat and start to build up that crust. 
Leave this here and just let it go for several minutes to build up that crust. And once you get a nice crust on that first side, flip that over. Once your meat is finished, take this out and first admire that crust that you got in there. But then rest it for about 15 minutes on a wire rack. Now for our second steak, I had to cut off the corner because I didn't think the whole thing would fit in my pan. But this actually helps me out. This little piece of fat right here will help to lubricate up the pan the same way we had that fat cap for our American Wagyu. As you can tell, this Japanese Wagyu does not have much of a fat cap on top. The whole thing is a fat cap. So I'll toss in my little trimmings here and let that fat start to render off in the pan. Basically just move those around until you can see a small pool of oil build up in your pan. We need to make sure that this pan is really hot for the Japanese Wagyu because it doesn't cook for long on each side at all. Now, once our pan begins to smoke, we're ready to put this in. Again, pretty quick on each side. We're just looking for that nice thin crust and getting it a little bit cooked on each side. And listen for that sizzle. Now, just leave it. If we have a hot pan here, it shouldn't take very long to get a crust. So, I'm now gonna flip this over. We nailed that crust. Absolutely killed it. Once we're all set here, I'll carefully lift out this piece of meat, admiring that beautiful crust on there, and lay it down to rest as well. I'm really happy with the crust and the color that we got on both of these steaks. What's interesting is that even though we had the same temperature, you can see that this gets a slightly lighter crust than this one. I'm honestly not sure why that is, but let's cut into these bad boys. I'll start by moving my tray out of the way and resting them both down on my cutting board. Let's start by looking at the crust on that American Wagyu. This thing is absolutely dripping. That crust that we got in there is just incredible. And no, it's definitely not burnt. I am so excited to cut into this bad boy. Now let's move on over to our Japanese strip loin. As you can see, this thing's got a really nice crust as well. It doesn't have quite as thick a crust built up. With that said, it's still got a really nice hard crust on here and it's also just dripping with juice and fat. Let's cut into both of these and see how they look. To start, I'll grab my knife and just go for it with this one. I wanna start right down the middle. And here we have the moment of truth. Perfect. Keep in mind that we can eat all of this meat raw. I know you've heard of steak tartare. I'll cut through this entire steak just so we can flip it up and give it a little bit more seasoning at the middle there. I also just wanna show you this up close. This right here is a perfectly cooked piece of Wagyu. Like a lot of people, I typically like my steak medium rare. And temperature wise, this is dead on medium rare right here. Now before we season that anymore, let's cut this one open too. These are a heck of a lot easier to cook because again, you really just quickly need to sear it on either side. It's not too hard to cook up a piece of really high-end Japanese Wagyu in my opinion, as long as you know the correct technique. I'll flip all of these pieces up and right away I can tell that it's perfect. Again, it's fairly hard to mess up the cooking process of this one. As you can see with this Japanese Wagyu here, we've absolutely killed it. And if you look even closer, you can still see that perfect marbling of fat and beef. To start, I have a little treat, a nice little additional twist for our video. Over the last Last week or so, I've been curing egg yolks. It's a very simple process and I'll make a video on it soon. But right now I'm digging out one of these egg yolks. Inside this even mixture of salt and sugar is a cured egg yolk. Once I brush off the rest of that sugar, you have your cured egg yolk. Now, once we've rinsed it off with water, you can see that we have that perfect, beautiful yolk that almost looks like a dried apricot. I've already gone ahead and dried the rest of the yolks in the oven. So we're now at the point that I can take one of these yolks then take a little microplane grater here and really nicely grate it over the top of my beef. You can see that that's just like Parmesan cheese. It's actually really cool. Then I'll hit my beef with just a little bit of white flaky salt to season the inside of that beef that we couldn't hit when we seasoned initially. As far as I'm concerned, that right there is one of the most beautiful bites that you can possibly have when it comes to food. Now that these beauties have been treated with yolk and flaky salt, let's eat. Now this is the moment we've clearly all been waiting for. On the left, we have American Wagyu, and on the right, we have Japanese A5 Wagyu. Both the same cut, both the same size, around 10, 12 ounces, both with the same seasoning. We kept this fight as even as we could. Since we cooked the American first, I feel like it's only fair if we try it first. Here we go. Ooh, that is gonna be hard to beat. That is that's fire. Is it actually good? Yeah. The way that I'm gonna think about the American Wagyu is that it's the best piece of normal steak that you could possibly ever have. Think about going into any steakhouse and getting the nicest steak on the menu, maybe one that's not Wagyu, and having them cook it perfectly, serve it nice and bubbly hot, and treat it with just the right amount of seasoning. That's what we've nailed right here. It's got that perfect chewiness, but also that perfect combo of fat there that's just so hard to beat. But now let's hop over to that Japanese Wagyu, see what we got going on. Again, that looks pretty damn ridiculous, but I'm not gonna say anything till I try it, so let's go. I do wanna start by saying that I can very easily just tear this apart. It's soft, it's amazing, but I'm not gonna get biased. Here we go. I see a balloon floating up outside. I got distracted. See the balloon? Oh yeah. 
It's pretty cool, huh? I love balloons. It's so crazy good. I got the perfect answer for everybody. We kind of knew a lot of this stuff going into it. This one definitely has a higher balance of fat to me, but this one over here is more similar to your traditional steak, but it's also just the best dang traditional steak you could ever ask for. So here's how I'll put it. If I'm having one little tiny bite and I want that perfect, amazing, insane bite of meat that's gonna blow my mind, I'm probably gonna choose that hot, bubbly, buttery piece of Japanese wagyu. And let me just tell you that that cured egg yolk on the top is insane. But if I'm sitting down to eat a really good steak and I wanna have an entire higher thing for my dinner, I'd probably pick the American Wagyu every single time. With that said, these were both insane and I'm really happy that we did this. The other thing that I do love about the American Wagyu is that I can get that really nice thick crust on there. And there's something about eating meat with a really nice crust on the edge that I just absolutely love. It's just hard to beat. And if you grow up eating steak, that's how you have it. So it's just nice to have it that way. With that said, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I want to thank each and every one of you for all your support. Hope you loved it. In the meantime, I hope you'll excuse me because I got a lot of meat to eat. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs>